Hello, Syngap Land. My name is Michael Gralia, and today is Thursday, July 13th. This is episode 108, a very auspicious number, by the way, episode 108 of Syngap 10. You may notice that I am in a new office because we have successfully, depending on how you define success, we have successfully moved from our old house to our new house, and I now have this as my office. And I finally found some childcare, which means I have five minutes to think straight. And I wanted to get this recording out because it's been about a month, which is a really long time for not having a Syngap tent. But I'm really excited for everything I'm going to talk about today because it's all good news. So a month ago, Ed, our, our fearless leader of communications and marketing, put out a, oh, by the way, allow me to show off my fancy SRF. Singap One Conference T-shirt 2023, 2023, I guess you go that way, in Orlando, Florida. I also have a matching sweatshirt. If you listen to the last recording, you too could have ordered one of these. And I really want to talk about the back of the sweatshirt. Has Accure Singap One across the back, which is our social media handle. Has the Timeless Singap Research Fund logo on it. Also has the SRF Europe logo with the European star ring and the Fondo Singap logo because we are one big SRF family. So we got the Europeans on here, we got the Fondo on here, and we have our ICD-10 code. Now, I will admit, the design people did not love the back of this. They were like, Mike, that's too much stuff. And I, you know, the design people know design. And I was like, you guys got the front, but I get the back because this is all so cool. It is so cool that we have a unified social media handle. It is so cool we have sister organizations in other geographies, and it is so cool we have an ICD-10 code. So anyway, you too could show up to the SRF conference in swag. Follow the link on Bonfire. It's in the show notes. I just wanted to say that. All right, let me get back to what I was going to say before I interrupted myself, which I do. Ed Gabler did an amazing newsletter for our fifth birthday. Did an amazing newsletter for our fifth birthday. Read it. It's uh, the links in the show notes. Check it out. Uh, one of the coolest things that happened in the past month was that we got accepted into Faster Cures. If you go back to episode 98, 10 episodes ago, I talked about the, um, the framework for readiness for a patient advocacy group. This is all I talked about in episode 98 and how excited I was by it. Now, if you remember that episode, Millican, big foundation, Millican Health, part of the foundation that focuses on health. Faster Cure is the part of the health group of the Millican Foundation that focuses on rare disease. And within Faster Cures, they have an operation called TRAIN. And TRAIN is for groups like ours who are learning and trying to get better at what we do and, and learning how to be better patient advocacy groups because we're all here for the same reason, right? We love someone who's got this rare disease and we want to make their future better. That's it. That's the whole game. That's why I do what I do all day, every day. I love my son. My son's got a rare disease. And I firmly believe that the work of SRF is going to make Tony's future better. And the way we make Tony's future better is we make the future better for all the kids with Syngap 1. It's that simple. And TRAIN is all about helping us work with like-minded people, people who are farther along in the journey than us, and, and to work with them. So, so grateful to Milken for letting us into TRAIN. And I am committed to taking as much as I can from that opportunity and giving as much back, because that's how it works, and, and making the future better for Syngapians faster. That's why we're here. The census came out, 1,238. I'm not going to lie. That jump seems low to me. And I think what we're seeing is, um, why is it only 1,238? It's probably the smallest gain we've ever seen in a quarter. Why is that? Well, we just had a pandemic and you try seeing a doctor in a pandemic, right? So I think a lot of, I think what we're seeing now is the lag that comes from not enough people getting to clinicians of sick kids in the pandemic. And I, and I expect there to be a commensurate bump either the next quarter or the quarter after. And I, I will say that we already are seeing a lot of diagnoses come in suddenly. So who knows? But the census came out. Thank you to Jess and the, and the team who do the census. Incredible work. 1,238 patients counted for. Now, the big news, and it has been and will continue to be for some time, the incredible program at CHOP. So I want to start by saying uh, Jillian McKee got a grant from AAS. AAS is the American Epilepsy Society. So if you're a neurologist or an epileptologist, Getting a grant from AES is a big deal. We're very happy for Jillian. Why do we care about Jillian? Because Jillian is the doctor at CHOP, working with Dr. Helbig, 
who is focusing on Syngap. So Jillian's success is our success and we are, sorry, I said Jillian. Dr. McKee's success is our success and we are thrilled for her. By the way, and we're a little bit proud that that grant from AAS was co-funded by SRF and PERF. PERF is the Pediatric Epilepsy Research Foundation. Great people. Um, but SRF's in there. So we paid some, so some of the donations you gave, we told AES, hey, if anyone wants to fund Singap work, let us know. They called us, they said, hey, Jillian McKee. I said, yes. We wrote AES a check, AES wrote Jillian a check. Everybody wins. Everybody wins, right? She gets a prestigious fellowship. We spend a fraction of what it is and AES throws some money in and there's more work on Singap. So congratulations, Dr. McKee. Even better that that work is being funded at CHOP. What's going on at CHOP? Well that amazing, amazing natural history study that has begun. So there's a blog on our website written by Sydney. Sydney is, um, lives in Pittsburgh and is responsible for the CHOP relationship. She's on our board, Emmett's mom, amazing human being. So she's really the point on that relationship. And she wrote this blog about the, um, the natural history study. If you've been living under a rock, you don't know what I'm talking about, go read that blog. And then she went, she was one of the first patients to take part in that. And so she talked to us about her first day to participating in the study for everything from like what it was like, what the team was like, where to park, the whole nine yards. Sydney is nothing, it, Sydney is many wonderful things, including thorough. And then at, the team at CHOP wrote a reflection after that same first day, because it was the kickoff for the whole thing, right? So they saw St. Gappians, they saw SCXers, blah, blah, blah. And they wrote their reflections. All those links are in the show notes. They're all worth reading. If you have a St. Gappian and you can get yourself to Philadelphia, taking part in that natural history study is a must. It's a must, my friends, do it. Speaking of studies, there's a lot going on. If you go back <coughs> to episode 107, which, which I recorded a month ago, you will um, hear about four different studies that are going on, all with SRF engagement or support. So go listen to that if you, if you missed it. But I wanna emphasize, there's also a study going on right now at UCLA. So if you remember like, over a year ago, well over a year ago. We funded work at Boston Children's Hospital to find a biomarker via EEG. A number of families were enrolled and are probably some of them are probably on their coming back for the year, year follow-up. Um, because travel, we have set up a sister site at UCLA and they are off the ground and running. So a number of you in, in the California have heard from me asking you to sign up for that. If you're anywhere near UCLA, or you're gonna be going to LA for family vacation or whatever, and you wanna take part in that trial, please let us know. It is dead simple. You show up, well, you sign up and you sign stuff, whatever. And then you show up and you sit in a room for like 45 minutes. I've done this. 45 minutes. They put a hairnet on your kid to do an EEG. It's a hairnet. There is no glue. It's just this thing that looks like a hairnet sits on the kid's head. They get a screen. They watch the screen for 30 minutes. Boom, they're done. It's amazing. But that data is really, really valuable. And if it helps us find a biomarker for Syngap, it's a win. So if you're anywhere near UCLA or you could be, check out the West Coast site. If you're close enough and you're willing to go for an afternoon and then you got to fill out a bunch of forms afterwards. There's always forms to fill out. Um, and money is the problem. I, we will reimburse um, up to re reasonable costs for travel. Uh, you don't even have to overnight unless you have to overnight. which guys will pay for that too. But please get yourself to UCLA if you're anywhere near LA and let's get that data because once that kid sits in the chair and we put the hairnet and we get the data and we give the data to the brainiacs at Boston Children's Hospital, we get closer to them finding a biomarker. And a biomarker enables clinical trials and clinical trials is how we get drugs. We're all in this together, folks. We're all holding hands and working as fast and as hard as we can to make the future better for our kids. So if you can get to UCLA, do your part, get there. Also, um, missets. I, uh, Dr. Courtney did an incredible webinar about his work in Missense, which was initially funded by Leon and Friends and is now being carried by the Syngap Research Fund. Um, if you have a kid who has a Missense, or if you're like, what's the difference between a Missense and a protein truncating, and I want to know more about genetics, this is a beautiful webinar. Dr. Michael Courtney at Turku in Finland is, is just an amazing guy and has been working really hard. And, and producing beautiful stuff. He sent us an update that was like really long and I'm halfway through it. But please, if you're curious, that's a webinar to watch. It is one of the most recent webinars on our website. More great news, more great, so much great news. Podcasts, let's talk about podcasts. So Brain and Life, if you remember, is, a, is the magazine of, 
It's a neurology magazine. I can't remember which association runs it. I should. I'm a little embarrassed. But anyway, they did a great article in Brain and Life about uh, parents with children diagnosed with rare disease. And that, that article actually started talking about SRF, right? Pretty big deal. And the American Academy of Neurology is talking about you guys. It's exciting. But we started talking to them and I, I explained to them all the incredible work that, that Vicky Arteaga is doing um, with, with outreach to the Latin American community. And they said, well, we should do a podcast about SRF. I said, yeah, but you, what about talking to Vicky and Marta and Paulina and all the people we have doing that? So they did that. And they did this podcast in both languages. So they have an English podcast and they basically did a very similar podcast in Spanish. Part one has been released. So whether you speak English or Spanish, go listen to one of those podcasts and learn about um, Paulina's story and Marta's story and a little bit about Syngap 1. And then I think part two is coming with more about SRF. So tremendous win there. And why is that a win? Do we love it when people talk about us? Yeah, of course we do. But we really love it when people are talking about us in things that are targeted at neurologists. Things that are targeted at neurologists because the neurologists are the people who are going to see our kids. And the more they know about Syngap 1, the more podcasts and articles, podcasts they hear and articles they read, the better treatment our kids are going to get because they're going to be like, oh yeah, Syngap 1, that's a big deal. I need to learn more about that. So great job, Paulina, Marta, and Vicky on, on doing those podcasts. Thank you for doing them. And uh, you know, another win for the Syngap Research Fund as we engage critical communities like neurologists and educate them about us. We also have a podcast for ourselves. We have a podcast called Syngap Stories. I talked last episode about, uh, we, did an art, we did an interview, we, Ashley Fry, um, did an interview with Danny Williams in Australia. Great episode. And she's done two more episodes since then that I think both are fabulous. Now you're like, Mike, you're all, everything's fabulous. Everything's amazing. Yeah, well, most of it is, frankly. But these two... Whoa. So episode 11 interviews the co-founder of the Syngap Research Fund, who happens to be my wife, Ashley Evans. And I, I am biased, but it is true. She's amazing. And if you, if you don't know about Ashley, you should listen to episode 11 and, and meet Ashley Evans, my wife, in conversation with Ashley Fry, not my wife, Kevin's wife. And then you should listen to episode 12 which is Ashley Fry, who hosts Sing Gap Stories, does an amazing job, talking to Monica Harding. Monica Harding, I describe as one of the beating hearts of this community. Um, she and her husband, Aaron, live in San Diego. Jackson is 16. Forgive me if I got that wrong. And um, Monica is one of the first moms I talk to. She opens her heart and her home to any Sing Gap family who's anywhere near San Diego. And she's just an amazing human being. And her... Um, Interview with Ashley is exceptional. So episode 11, episode 12, frankly, all of them. If you haven't subscribed to Syngap Stories and you haven't listened to every single episode, you should. But start with the most recent ones because these two are both very special. All right, cruising right along. The conference t-shirt. I already talked about these conference sweaters and how excited I am about them. We have t-shirts, we have sweaters. You can get different colors. You can get Razorbacks. You can get whatever you want. It's all possible bonfire. Links in the show notes. But um, the conference is live. You can register now. So we have a link to register. We have a link to the hotel. We have a link to the merch. Get on it, people. Make a family vacation. Uh, a couple people have sent me emails asking, Thursday is a science day, right? It's going to be a lot of scientists and doctors and parents who want to be there talking. Will not be watered down. Friday is family day. It'll be all about families and supporting our kids and distilling the science day and whatever. You can go home after Friday, but I would stay because we'll have a big dinner Friday night. But Saturday, you're in Orlando, right? So we can go to SeaWorld, we can go to Disneyland, we do something, all the family's gonna go out. So pretty much I would fly in on Wednesday and I would fly out on Sunday. Um, unless you wanna stay longer, whatever. But it's gonna be an amazing conference and I urge every family to come, especially if you're newly diagnosed. Newly diagnosed families like, oh, it's all so new, I don't know, but look, your kid's sick. They're gonna be sick for your whole life until we get medicines, and then they're gonna be less sick. But this community is your lifeline. This is where you can go to get the, 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 the bottom line on drugs. This is where you can go to find out which companies are doing what. This is where you can go to, to deal with all the questions you're afraid to ask. And we come together in person one time a year, the whole enchilada. I mean, you can go and do the MDBR, and you can go to little conferences, and you can go to regional meetups, and you should do all that. But once a year, the whole community comes together at our conference just before the American Epilepsy Society meeting where we run around and we talk to doctors and clinicians and researchers. So get yourself to the conference in Orlando, people. It's a big deal. We work 
I can't even tell you the amount of work these things are. They're massive. So many details. And Lauren and Ashley and Ed and the whole team do it all together. Now, yesterday, speaking of Ed, um, Ed put out another newsletter. He does it once a month. God bless him. I used to dread doing these newsletters. I used to do these myself. They were not nearly as good as Ed's and they took, they took years off my life. Um, and Ed put another one out. Pretty much, I could have just read Ed's newsletter instead of making these show notes. I'm, I'm just going to start waiting for Ed to do a newsletter and then I'll just talk to it because he covered it all. So it's a beautiful newsletter. Links at the end of the show notes. Um, you should read it. There's probably a few things in there I missed. And um, it's really exciting, you guys. It's really exciting that SRF has grown to the point where all the people I mentioned today, Lauren, Jess, Ed, Sydney, the UCLA people, Callie helping with all the studies, Corey working with the community, Vicky, Paulina, Marta, Monica, Ashley. Apologies to all the people I've missed. Remember the first thing I said in this episode? We just celebrated our fifth birthday. This organization has been around for five years and all those people and more have come together and have realized that the Syngap Research Fund is an effective tool to make the future better for our kids. I love that. I love that we have helped to create a community here, a place where this community can come together and maximize and multiply our input, impact. This is a new thought. You can tell I'm thinking on my feet here. I probably shouldn't do that too much. But it's exciting. It's exciting. Happy fifth birthday to SRF. Thank you to everyone on the team. Um, if you're near LA, go and sign up for that study. If you didn't watch episode 107, go up, watch episode 107 and do the stuff in there. Excited about Faster Cures. It's on. It's on. There's a lot of good stuff happening. I didn't even mention. Talk about it in future episodes. Um, if you have a child with Syngap 1, I'm sorry, it sucks. And... There's a lot going on to make that child's future better. And the reason SRF exists is a lot of that wouldn't even be happening if it wasn't for SRF. And the stuff that would have happened anyway is happening faster and better because of SRF. This organization is making a difference in the future of our loved ones. And I'm grateful to every single person who puts their time, their money, their trust in us. We earn it every day, I promise you. Thank you.